So we're here with um, street photographer Keith Moss. Um, we're just going to find out a little bit more about the cameras that he uses for street photography and basically what he loves about street photography. So, hi Keith. Hi. Do you want to tell us about the cameras that you use? Um, my favourite camera is um, this Fuji. At the moment, it does change. Um, it's um, an old Fuji um, GS645S. Pro to give it its full title, long title. Basically, it's a manual camera. Um, some people will say it's not the quietest of cameras, and I would agree with that. Well, um, you can hear here, the shutter's quite loud. Well, that's never bothered me. Um, the image quality is fantastic. The lenses on these Fuji's have always been brilliant. Um, it's compact, it's medium format, um, it's a range finder, so it's of the Leica ilk. I possess a Leica M4, but when it comes to street photography, for some reason, I prefer a bigger negative, which is um, medium format basically. Um, so I love this camera, it's got a 60mm lens fixed on it, which means that I can't put another lens on. I like the fact that you know, wherever it is, is wherever it is. So. It's about me getting into the place, not about me zooming in or whatever. So you've got to get right into the action, which I love. Um, just a great camera. So I see that you've got uh, another couple there. Um, what, what are those? Are they film cameras or digital cameras? Yeah, I mean, with street photography, um, and with a lot of stuff I do, whether that's portraits or whatever, I, I shoot analog. It's my favourite medium, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, this is a Raleigh 35S, so it's tiny, really. Um, it's only as big as a roll of film. So you put a roll of 35mm film in there, um, and as you can see, it really is just as big as a roll of film. It's a tiny camera. Um, the big, it's got some good points and some bad points. The good points are the lens quality is superb. It's a little Carl Zeiss lens. So the quality of the finished negative is, is, is fantastic. The lens sort of pulls out and twists that activates it. It's tiny, it's silent, very little noise um, and beautiful to use. It's sort of like you can keep it in your pocket, um, it's a great little camera. You alter the Shutter speed by turning that dial and you alter the aperture by turning that dial. The only negative about this camera is you can't focus with it. So there is no way to focus. So the focus on it you've got to really guess. You've got a distance there but you've got to guess. And with me um, that's not an issue because I use what they call zone focusing anyway. Um, and I'll probably explain what zone focusing is on another um, on another video but I use zone focusing basically so it never bothers me I preset the focus and um, there is no light meter in it there is a light meter but you can't get the batteries today um, but again I use a handheld light meter anyway it's much more accurate so uh, how old is that camera then? I think it's from um, I don't know the exact date of this one it's around the 60s um, it's a camera that every professional in those days would have as a backup basically to their um, SLR really. But lovely little piece of kit, you know, once you've preset everything and you're walking it's just to quite, just frame it and away you go. Um, people don't notice you with this camera, it's just one of those little cameras that, you know, it's even smaller than a Leica and, and, and quieter and unobtrusive so you can get into places that you would never be able to get with a huge digital SLR. This is a great little camera, I love it. The third camera that I have with me today is another favourite really, it's a twin lens Rolex 6.6. So it's medium format film again, um, negative size 6 by uh, 6 centimetres. The beauty of this is it's got a Carl Zeiss, original Carl Zeiss um, F28 planar lens on it. Um, which I have to say, this camera was built, this particular one was built in 1959 
Um, but the ladies, the quality of the finished print is absolutely stunning. Um, from a contrast and everything point of view, sharpness and all the rest of it. It's a really beautiful camera. But again, a fixed lens, 80mm, so standard lens basically. Um, it has a ground glass screen which is beautiful when you look at it, when you're looking at anything through it. It just is so vibrant and everything stands out. Uh, somebody once described it as almost being 3D and I would agree with that. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and again, a different type of camera but and a different way of using it. You would sort of like walk around like that, you focusing it with that hand. Again, quite silent. You hardly notice it. Um, but because you walk around like that with it and it's you know on your waist basically people don't tend to notice that you're using it um, so a great camera uh, again one of my favourites so do you find using that <clear> that 6.6 um, six camera that it um, creates interest when you're going around doing street photography and you're photographing people so surprisingly it's not yeah as um, obtrusive or People just find it interesting. They come and talk to you, or that yeah. Kind of I think when you point something like that towards somebody, they don't tend to, you know, um, be aggressive in any way. They sort of look at you and, and oh, what is that? Is that film? Are you using film? That's an old camera. It's beautiful. What is it? And I tend to let them have a look at it and look through it. And wow. So yeah, it's a bit of an icebreaker sometimes. Mm. I, I always get a lot of people come and talk to me about it. Sometimes I get it on the other side. People. Sometimes people come and say, are you not swapping a digital yet? Is it like, and, and obviously, um, so I get both sides really, but yeah, it's a good icebreaker. I mean, those two in particular, both are, this one, no, not so much, because I guess it looks a little bit more like a digital camera really. So do you shoot mainly on film or always on film? Um, depends what I'm doing. My passion is street photography and portraiture, and I always shoot analog, um, no matter what. Really, that's my my thing. I love film. Why um, is that then? Why do you shoot film? It's a different medium to digital. It's not as sharp. Um, for me, there is still nothing like um, a fiber-based darkroom print that you print in a darkroom, obviously. Um, there's nothing digitally that comes anywhere close to it for me. The contrast in it, the punch that you can get in it, the beauty. Um, it's just very different. Digital is very sharp. I like some of the grain as well in film, and especially for street photography. It's a bit more gritty, a bit more earthy, if that makes sense. Um, it's stable, so whether it's raining or whether it's bright or whether it's dull, um, it's dead stable, this film. Um, you can chuck the stuff about and you're not worried about anything. Um, I just love film. It, it's just, also, it makes you think. Um, I think with digital cameras, I, I shoot digital cameras, but I tend to shoot them more on a commercial basis. And you tend to think a lot more with film because being a Yorkshire man originally, um, I'm not good at wasting things. I'm not good at things costing me money. Um, I don't know whether we're worse than the Scots or the Scots are worse than us, but nevertheless it makes me think because if I can get a shot in one shot, then that's what I'll do. I don't tend to waste film. And, and because of that, you just think a lot more and you connect. I think you connect a lot more with your subject matter, no matter what you're doing. Um, and it's a much more beautiful process, a much more traditional and true process for me. Um, I always come up with the image in my head first and then I have various different techniques that I will use to, to capture it in the camera um, as opposed to altering it in Photoshop. So when you're out and about then and you, you're going for your, the day out doing some street photography, what would you take with you? Uh, I assume you travel light, but other than a camera do you take anything else with you? Oh, no, not really. I will take, um, at the moment, a lot of the time I'll take the Fuji because it's a 6 by 4.5 centimetre negative um, the quality of the negative that you get from here is fantastic if it's dark I can put a roll of 3200 in and it looks like a roll of 400 on 35mm um, it's very flexible it's light and that's all I would take I would take nothing else other than this particular camera so um, I have heard that more and more people are switching back to film 
and you obviously shoot film all the time with your street photography. Um, do you have your own dark room? Um, do you process your own film? Yeah, I have. I have my own dark room. I'm very lucky. I've got a, quite a nice dark room through the other part of the gallery, uh, at the back of the gallery. Um, it's it's a lovely dark room. Um, it's a place of peace. It's my garden shed, I suppose, in a way. Um, and it's it's the rest of the story, if that makes sense. When I press the shutter, I know I've captured the image. Then. For me, there's a real amount of excitement and anticipation of when I get back in the dark room. Um, and processing the film, I can choose which way I want to process the film. There's so many different choices right the way throughout the process. So, you know, if I'm shooting Ilford Delta, say, my two favourite films are Ilford Delta uh, 400, which has got really quite a tight grain, it's sharp grain, I would call it. Um, and depending on what chemistry I use to process it, it has got incredibly good detail in highlights and shadows in, in, in rich blacks. Um, my other film of choice is HP5, which is Ilford again, which is slightly softer, the grains. Um, I think the grains are not as noticeable, but the image is softer, there's no two ways about it. But a beautiful film nevertheless. So, and again, choosing different chemistry to, to process the filming will give me different results and I can push or pull the process, uh, which means overdevelop it or underdevelop it. It will give me a different type of negative. And then from there, um, I use Ilford multigrade paper. Sadly, there's not a lot of graded stuff out there anymore. Um, so, if I want a thin neg, if I want Blacks to be really black and whites to be white, not a lot of contrast in, in between. I would sort of um, produce a thin negative and then print on a hard grade of paper. Um, so there's so much choice, and, and you know, so for me, I do all the work in the camera and make life, make my life a lot easier in the dark room. A lot of um, photographers that I've spoken to would like to go back to film. They sort of started off on film and then gone to digital. But one of the things that puts people off going back to film is there is nowhere where they can process uh, their films themselves or print themselves. Do you offer your dark room out for people to use or rent it out? Or? Yeah, I think that's changing. Um, along with Ilford, we came up with a campaign of of share a dark room basically. And the reason for that is like myself, if I, I go to Barcelona, I go all over Europe um, working and sometimes I re I'm really excited about what I've shot and something happens that you don't expect and it's like, wow, I wanna make sure I've got that. I'm really excited about that. Um, and I wanna process my film there and then. And I, and I think that stopped a lot of people not having those facilities where you can just walk in. So along with Ilford, I, I came up with a, a solution for that, which is share a darkroom. So anybody that's got a public, whether it's a public darkroom or a private darkroom, there is a scheme out there where you can share it to other professionals or amateurs. Um, and it's really working at the moment. So we're part of that scheme. So people can come and share my darkroom um, at no cost, as long as they pay for the chemistry and, and the paper, then that's fine. Um, so yeah, I think, there has been not a lot of access to dark rooms and a lot of dark rooms have gone and a lot of companies have got rid of their dark rooms and all gone digital. But there is a big movement back and I think the movement is coming back because mainly the kids are bringing it back with low more cameras and, and holders and things like that. But also I think the discerning professional is turning back to film, turning back to analog because it offers something different to the client mainly in the social markets, but it is, it is different. Do you think it's sort of seen more as an art form? Yeah, I think it is, and, and it definitely is more of an art form. Um, there's a lot more processes involved and it's a lot more time consuming, but yes, it is more of an art form. Um, this word artisan has been attached to it. Um, the same as you can get artisan bread and artisan everything. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think it will ever die out, I don't think it's ever going to be mainstream again, but for a discerning few, people will always shoot film. And more and more are turning back to film, I think more to differentiate themselves from everybody that shoots digital. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your street photography then. Um, what, how would you describe your style of street photography? 
It's a difficult one, that, really. I mean, I tend to work on a subconscious level, and that sounds a bit pretentious, but basically I'm looking at content, I'm looking at emotion, I'm looking at mood, I'm looking at something different in there that is almost not Photoshop, if that makes sense. And, and, that's, and that's another reason why I choose film, because um, it adds to that. So, typically, I... I'm an observer, I observe and I follow and I, I don't stalk, but I'll sort of get myself into a position where I can anticipate something's going to happen and then I'll wait and watch and I observe for the right person to come along or the right people to come around. And sometimes I'll ask them and say, do you know what, you've got an amazing face. I mean, one person just recently, I did a street course up in Edinburgh and I noticed this Hells Angel and he was sort of preaching God, basically. And I sort of looked at him and he'd got the most amazing face. And I just stopped and said, just basically said to him, you've got an amazing face, can I photograph you? And after he looked at me, a bit puzzled, he sort of said, yes, and most people do. Um, so that's one sort of style. And then I, so I photographed him. Um, and I had a really nice chat. But then my other style is this observation and and you know just sort of watching and anticipating what's going to happen and then being there at the right time and capturing it. Um, I love doing street portraits, um, I do it a lot. I've recently done some in um, Bosnia um, where I went down the street and photographed a lot of kids that were in sort of in the Balkan war years ago and now adults you know um, and, and most of them are art based and just getting to know people and, and trying to capture what's inside people. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit different to, I don't push cameras in people's faces and so I'm an observer really. So do you, would you say that you have a preference then? Do you prefer to show people close up or do you prefer to capture people at a distance? Or do you even have a preference on that or is it whatever zone you're in if you like yeah I think whatever it is country. really like, it, it's, it's what matches the person for me sometimes it's great to get in close with people and other times it isn't it depends on the person sometimes if you're getting too close um, you can physically feel um, that you're encroaching a little bit too much and it stops them being themselves uh, and, and stops them giving me what giving me their soul basically or whatever you want to call it um, so yeah it will depend on the person I'm photographing and it will depend on the environment and it will depend whatever else I want to see and whatever else I want to bring what other elements I want to bring into the image yeah so that would bring me on to the next question really which is do you prefer to shoot an image as a landscape or as a portrait um, it, that all depends on, on how I frame it up, it all depends on the composition um, and what's around and what I want to show. Um, I've no preference, it's just something I do natural. A lot of people say, um, I've got this great rule of thirds and this golden triangle and all the rest of it in there and to me that doesn't mean anything, it's just what I feel is right to do at the time. Um, so yeah, it, it, again it all depends on my instinct really, and the person, or the environment, or, or whatever I'm shooting. So when you, when you, when you spot something, are you, are you, <coughs> what is it that you're actually looking for when, you, when you're capturing your image? Are, are you looking for anything specific, or does it just sort of come and it's there in front of you? I'm usually looking for, if it's people, I'm looking for some emotional connection. So I'm looking for, I'm looking what's actually inside somebody, and that's what I'm trying to capture. For me, with people, the real beauty of somebody is not the aesthetics, it's what's inside them. So that's what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking at that. With environments, and it, it, it is about the environment, and it's about the people that are walking past, and it's about connecting the two elements, really, of if there's a person walking past on a crossroads or whatever, and there's some archways or whatever, it's a matter of connecting the environment with that person and matching it up really. Yeah. Giving something a bit more visual stimulating to look at really and, and making somebody think about what I'm actually doing. Yeah because I would imagine if you're doing portraits, um, street portraits if you like, that's going to take a little bit longer than 
spotting something in the street and just capturing a, a, a moment, if, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I, I do street portraits really, really quickly, I think. Um, for me, but that's... But you need, you need that kind of connection. You instant need to, connection. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that comes from a lifetime of, of, of people watching and it comes from a lifetime of, of my other interests, which is I love people. So, you know, it's not really a photographic skill as such, I don't think. It's not a technical photographic skill. It's about being human. It's about, as soon as you meet somebody and you have that lovely smile with them and you have that way with you, you can just open people up really, really quickly um, and, and get people to trust you really, really quickly. Um, and it just so happens that I have that ability. So I don't think about it, I just do it. Um, and it always works, so I don't question it either. So I can, I, I usually can do that really, really quickly. I think it's sort of the questions I ask and the way I smile and the way I look and the way my body language is. Um, that's how people, people respond to people, basically. So that, that, that's my style on that side of it. And the yeah, other so it's, it's like, so <clears throat> for your street photography then, you seem to have two different sides, there's almost like a street portraiture where you are connecting with the person, the person's looking directly at you in the camera and giving themselves to you if you like. Whereas some of your other images you're just capturing people in the street going about the business. Yeah, it's observing. And, so and do you see them both as street photography or do you see them as different? No, I see it all as street photography, you know, it's because I'm shooting out in the street, so I'm not bringing something into a studio, I'm, I'm not you know, taking them to a, a location and saying we're going to do a portrait I'm just, I meet somebody and instantly I'll photograph them. Sometimes I'll do it when they don't even know because, you know, I don't need to say anything. Sometimes people are just who they are when they're walking around. More often than not though you'll find nowadays people are very focused on where they're going and they're always using late and they've got their heads in one position and they don't look down, they don't look up, they don't look anywhere. It's just, you know, the way things are um, with life out there at the moment. So um, sometimes it's quite interesting capturing that, but then other times it's quite interesting stopping somebody and saying, do you know what? You look amazing, kind of photograph you. So of all the places that you've been, what would you say is your favourite place or the best place? Mm. My favourite and best. Well, there's two cities that I absolutely love. One is Barcelona, and I would guess that is my favourite. But coming a very close second is Budapest. I absolutely love Budapest. I don't get there enough. Um, but Barcelona, it's got everything, really. It's such a free city. Yeah, there's issues with um, pickpockets and so on and so forth, but there's never any violence there. It's a safe city. Um, it's a very diverse city. The people are along with the people are always lovely. You can stop a street artist, a, a graffiti artist I did on my last visit a couple of months ago. I had a chat with him and said, Can I photograph you? And it's like, Yeah, no problem. Nobody has an issue with you out there photographing them, you know. So I love that in, in Barcelona, it's very free. There's a huge amount of graffiti out there, which I love. Um, so I think Barcelona is my favourite and it's quite diverse. So how would you go about um, choosing places to visit for uh, street photography? Does it depend on opportunity or do you, a mood that you're in? Or how do you choose where to actually go, the places that you go? Um, yeah, I suppose uh, some of it depends on mood, but I'm not really into doing a lot of street stuff in England. I know that sounds a bit weird. There's places that I love, London's one, Edinburgh is another. Um, I don't really get totally inspired by many other cities in England. Um, it's usually an Eastern Bloc type country, as in Dubrovnik, Bosnia, them sort of areas, Slovenia. Um, they're just so different and so beautiful. And Barcelona, Budapest, all those cities are absolutely fantastic. It's just, I suppose it's a different envir environment to what we live in. In this country so those are the things that excite me really and the other obvious one is the fact that people just accept you know and don't have a problem with you pointing the camera towards them especially if you smile 
you know, if you smile and say thank you if they notice you, usually they smile back and, and whereas in this country things can get a bit aggressive sometimes, although that's never happened to me, yet. So, um, talking about the technique that you use um, with your camera, can you explain the technique that you use? Do you, are, are you pre-setting your cameras, you know, as, as far as shutter speed and things is, things is concerned? How do you actually go about physically taking the shot? Um, the technique that you use? It's the same with all the cameras really that I use, um, which is another reason why, for me, digital cameras just complicate matters. So, you, for me, I just want a basic um, camera, usually that's mechanical, that gives me the choice of setting my own shutter speed, my own aperture, and my own focus. So, for instance, if I'm out and about and I take a reading, whether this be through a camera or through um, a, a light meter, I can preset my exposure, basically. So I can preset my shutter speed, um, say to 125th, and I can preset my aperture, um, say to f11. I roughly know what depth of field I've got, in other words, what how much is going to be in focus. And then what I do is I use a, a zone focusing system. So what that means is I use a hyperfocal range really on, on your camera lenses, which is that bit there. It's a bit you need to get a bit closer. But so basically, if I if my sort of remit is to photograph somebody two meters to fifteen meters away, if I set my focus to three meters, then using the hyperfocal range on the lens, the f11 it is still down to 2 metres and it goes to 15 metres. So I know that everything from 2 metres to 15 metres is going to be in focus. So basically I can walk around and not even worry about focusing. Okay. So my aperture is correct, my shutter is correct and I know what depth of field I've got. I know the hyperfocal range so I know what depth of field I've got. So if anybody comes within 2 to 15 metres of, of, of me, um, I can quickly just take a shot, as simple as that. This is quite an interesting camera as well because that normally is landscape, but on this camera it's portrait, and that way, so it's the opposite way around, that's landscape, um, which on a normal camera it would be portrait. So, yeah, it, it's just straightforward. So that way, Wherever I am, wherever is happening, I can react instantly without even focusing. Okay, another technique I use is, I suppose it's called shooting from the hip, but because I've predetermined my exposure, my shutter speed, my aperture, I know that's going to be correct. I've predetermined my focus. Um, what I can do is I can walk around with my camera on my hip or down below, and if I see anything interesting coming to one side, I can just point it in that direction look somewhere else and I can just click um, and I know it's going to be in focus um, and I know the exposure is going to be right. So you can be, if you want to be a little bit more sneaky, you can do it by by doing that. You know, there's various different ways you can hold it and, and away you go. But most people, another rule I use is a 20% rule and basically what that means is if somebody's coming directly at you, if you point a camera straight at them, they're going to see you and they're going to wonder what you're doing. Whereas if you're using a wide angle lens and they're coming straight for you, yet you're pointing the camera over there, and especially this camera because people automatically think it's portrait when it's actually landscape. So if I point my camera over there, I've still got you in shot. So people never think that you're taking a photograph. Um, one of the other things is if people do look at you a bit funny if you're a little bit more straight on, what I tend to do is, is sort of as they're coming further towards me, I tend to look past them and then, you know, I reckon I'm looking on the back of my camera. I don't know why, because it's not digital, but, you know, I'm sort of trying to wait for them to go past and look and, and obviously they think nothing's going on. Um, so there's, there's loads of little techniques that you can use, but um, that's some of the techniques I use. So, can you say in a sentence, or there or thereabouts, what you really like about street photography? Um, in a sentence, I can't say anything in one sentence. <laughs> I think um, 
anybody that knows me knows that. Um, there's so many things I like about the street photography. It's almost private in the respect of, for me it's like hunting. You know, I'm going out with a roll of film and a camera and I'm going hunting. Um, and I've got that anticipation. I can equate, I can equate to it with fishing as well. I don't know if I'm going to get anything. I don't know if I'm going to get something amazing. But that anticipation is always there. And also, loving people. There's also an opportunity to meet somebody that's really, really, that you enjoy being with, that you enjoy talking to, uh, and just having that human contact. So there's a lot of elements for me about street photography, why I love street photography, uh, but the anticipation is one of them. And when you do get something and you know you've got something special, it's a fantastic feeling. And then, you know, it continues with you because then you need the opportunity to get back and get in the darkroom, which you can't always do the next day or even the same day because of you know, other work commitments, I may be doing a portrait somewhere, I may be doing a fashion shoot somewhere, or whatever, and it might be a week before I can get in. So I can get a bit frustrated and a bit grumpy, um, because I can't get in the dark room. So it's just the whole thing, of, and also being out in the fresh air. You know, really, I don't think me as an animal, I were never meant to be inside anyway. So it's, it's, it's a load of different things. It's a fantastic thing. Well, that's great, uh, Keith. Thanks, um, thanks for your time.